Well, I've done it again. Hi there, it's Kristen and Fiona, who is very much interested in this plant that I've been trying to grow. I seem to have a very difficult time keeping things alive. I don't know if I give them too much water or not enough water or if they're in the sun too long or too little or maybe it got too cold and the plant's roots just didn't work as they were supposed to. I'm not sure, but once again, it seems like I have a wilting, sad little plant here. I tried, I really did, but I guess I'm only human and I just, maybe I just can't grow things. But I've seen some pretty amazing things that have been able to grow in nature. For example, I wanna show you this picture of these amazing, beautiful flowers. Look at these flowers. I mean, that's pretty spectacular, right? And who do you think is responsible for these flowers? Who's the one that watered them and planted them and put all the right plant food in to make them grow? Was it a person? Was it someone living in a little cottage that just walks around the fields all day and plants these things and waters them? No. These are wildflowers. That means they just grow out of nature. So they're actually tended to by God himself. I mean, all living things come from God. But wildflowers like that, they grow because that's the way God designed it. And he is so amazing that he can take care of flowers like that and make sure that they have enough soil and water and sunshine to live and grow beautiful. And the Bible tells us that God cares a lot about all of his creations, about flowers, even about animals, about birds. Our gospel today talk about how much God cares for birds, even though there's a lot of birds in the sky and they're not really worth that much, but God still cares about them and takes care of them. And if that's the case, how much more does God take care of his most precious creation, his children, us, people? We can be assured that God loves us very much because he is our heavenly father. That's what he shares with us and promises us, that he is our father. Now, I happen to really like my dad. I have a father here on earth, and he has taken care of me throughout my life. So when I was a kid, he would make sure that I had the things that I needed to survive. Maybe not always the things that I thought I wanted. So like when I asked him if I could have candy for dinner one night, he told me I should have some vegetables instead because he knew what I needed, not necessarily just what I wanted. Well, God is the same way. He gives us what we need for our daily lives. He promises to always take care of us and to always love us because we're his children. And you know, God is an even better father than our earthly fathers. Some of us might have really great dads at home, and some of us maybe unfortunately don't, because not all earthly fathers do as good of a job. They're humans. Sometimes they make mistakes. Sometimes they can't do things as well. But we have the wonderful, blessed assurance that even if maybe we don't have a great dad here on earth, we still have God as our father, that he still promises to take care of us because he can do absolutely amazing things that we couldn't even imagine or fathom might be possible. So we know that God promises to take care of us. We know that he loves us, that if he takes care of flowers and birds and animals in the sea and all these other things, we're his crowning creation. So he will take care of us too. He loves us so much that he came to earth and became one of us and died for us. He loves us enough to take care of the horrible problem of sin by sending Jesus, by sacrificing his son for us. That's how much God loves us. And he is a good father. He is a good father. He is a loving father. He will take care of us. He promises to always be with us. He hears us when we pray. We can talk to him anytime. 
sometimes it's hard for us to really feel that he's near if we can't see him or sense him or hear him, but we know that he's there. We can be confident that he's there, that he wants to hear from his children, just like your dad probably enjoys listening to you talk. At least I hope so. And if he doesn't, God for sure does. God always does. People, we make mistakes. We don't always know how to take care of things. But God will always provide everything that we need for our daily life, for our entire lives. God will always be there for you. He's the best kind of father there is. And we'll always have him and be assured of that. That's a wonderful thing. So on this Father's Day, don't forget to give your dad a hug, to tell him Happy Father's Day, but to remember that God is our Father and he will always be there for us too. So if you have a good dad, that's awesome. That will remind you that God is even better than that and that we know we have him for our Father because of that we're brothers and sisters in Christ. What could be better than that? That's a pretty big family. That's a pretty fantastic thing to remember. Well, why don't we say a prayer right now and we can thank God for letting us call him Father and for welcoming us into his family. Dear God, thank you for being our Father. Thank you for taking care of us. You always know what we need and provide us with what we need. Help us to trust you, to talk to you, to love you. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for your son, Jesus. In his name, amen. So don't forget, call your dad, hug your dad, make a card for your dad, and talk to your heavenly dad. Have a great week. See you next time.